Well, Richard, wouldn't it be great if we if we never had to deal with any of the pests that we encounter here in the in the Florida greenhouses? Um, in all of my years, it's never happened, and probably <laughs> will never expect it to happen. And in the situation where we assume that we're going to have some pests that are going to get into the greenhouse, some of the more serious, common ones that we expect here in Florida, um, what, what are some of the strategies that we can we can take to to deal with some of these major pests? Well, if you did a good job on monitoring and and scouting for these insect pests, you can generally start off with with um, the least disruptive of the, the control tactics, and that is generally introducing beneficials. Uh, these can be either predatory mites or uh, predaceous insects, or uh, perhaps some of the new parasitoids that are, have been uh, evaluated and are very effective in the greenhouse. These are, are insects and mites that you purchase and then release onto the crop. They're, they don't harm the crop, but they do feed on the, the pest insects. And most of those are very specific. So for instance, if we have white flies, we can, we can buy a beneficial that will attack only the, the white flies, for instance. So catching the, the pest populations early and, and making the right selection of the beneficial is, is a pretty critical uh, step in that process, I assume. That's correct. Yeah. If we are able to successfully deal with the pest population with beneficials, uh, that would be a great way to, to deal with it. If, if we have certain uh, problems, if the temperatures are too cool, or some reason that the beneficials don't quite get the job done, and we need to go to maybe the second level of management in the, in the greenhouse pest populations, uh, there's, a, there's a number of things that we can use as spray materials, and I assume in that situation, Richard, we want to start off with some of the more mild types of materials that we would spray in the greenhouse. That's right. Um, there's a, a number of reasons why predators and parasites can't get established on plants. Temperature is certainly one. Uh, sometimes the, the uh, quality of the material that uh, you release just isn't uh, what it should be. And then they take a while to get acclimated to the greenhouse uh, conditions that you have. So if you're uh, slow in getting them uh, released or if there's a particularly large pest population uh, already established, many times they can't bring it under control and that's when we move to that next level. Uh, these are uh, materials like the soaps and oils, uh, neem uh, and BT products, the Bacillus thuringiensis products. Uh, these are materials that generally don't disrupt the greenhouse and many times if you've already released your beneficials in onto the plants, you can still use these materials and it doesn't disrupt the beneficials that are already there. And most of those products that you mentioned are, are very safe for the person doing the mm -hmm. application, require very little protective equipment and that type of thing. And, and most of those are also approved even for organic production. That's so right. if we have a certified organic grower here in Florida, uh, certainly selecting the beneficial insect or the, uh, these mild type of pesticides, most of those are gonna be okay for the certified organic grower even. So if, if we have to, and those uh, growers who are able and willing to, to use maybe the next level of the more conventional types of, of, of pesticides that are available, uh, tell us a little bit about how we would go about deciding what to use and, and how to use it if we needed to do that. Well, as soon as you move to that last level, and you must almost consider that as the, the, uh, the ultimate last chance at controlling the insect or the mite uh, uh, problem, uh, if nothing else is worked up to that point, uh, it's possible to go on to this last level. But this is where it gets a little bit more complicated, a little bit more requirements on the, uh, the applicator. First, you have to check the label. Many times, if that material is registered for use in the field, uh, it does not also automatically mean that it's recommended and, or registered for use in a greenhouse situation on that same crop. So you have to, number one, check that. Number two, uh, you've got to check to see whether uh, what sort of personal protective equipment is required so that you are safe when you're applying it. And then there's also another level of uh, requiring that there's a certain re-entry interval after the, the crop is sprayed before you can even come back in and work with that crop or work in the greenhouse. So that's another thing. And then finally, uh, many of these materials have a pre-harvest interval that might be 14 days before you can even harvest the plant. So this is another consideration. Uh, so there's the safety, there's the re-entry uh, issue, and then finally, 
uh, many times these materials are not selective and any beneficials that you would have gotten established early, those are generally disrupted to the point of not being effective for the balance of the, uh, the cropping season or uh, at least very late in the cropping season. So this is why we're saying that's at the last resort to, to go to something like that. Yeah. Well, that certainly makes sense, and I know that one of the more important points in that is that the label is the law, yes. and the grower would have to uh, make sure that they're following the label. And I know in a greenhouse uh, like this one where we've got a wide range of crops, it's oftentimes mm -hmm. very difficult to find a conventional spray material that would be even registered for a wide range of crops like we have in this greenhouse. So it makes it even more challenging mm -hmm. to, uh, to choose that third level. So it seems very important if we can start out, catch those pests early, deal with them on a biological control way, releasing good guys into the greenhouse and help us that way, or to use the, the milder types of mm -hmm. spray materials that are generally labeled for a much wider range of, uh, of crops in the greenhouse, that that certainly is, is, is the, seems like the sensible way, the, the way best to way go. To, to, mm -hmm. to go about doing that. So um, we, we have to be able to find the pest, know right. what it is, select the right strategy, and we've got these three different levels of decisions to be made, none of which are easy necessarily, mm -hmm. um, but with the good information that you provided us here, I think we can go about making a pest management strategy that'll work for us in the greenhouse. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Richard. You're welcome.